Hi guys and welcome to Sister's Kitchen. Today we're going to be making gyoza style duck dumplings. So if you're ready, let's get started. You will need a duck breast, Chinese cabbage, shiitake, cornstarch, gyoza leaves, an orange, chili, garlic, ginger, spring onion, five spices, mirin, rice vinegar, sesame oil, soy sauce, a bunch of bowls to mix your ingredients, baking paper, and some containers to put your gyoza in. You'll also need some hoisin sauce, a spatula and tongs, a pan with a lid, a timer, something to keep your water in, sesame oil, and peanut oil. First we're going to do our cabbage, so we're just going to take some leaves off and cut the middle bit out because that's really hard and bitter. And what I like to do is I like to stack my leaves so that they're easier to chop up later. How fine you cut it is up to you. I like to have it really fine though so that it mixes really well with the meat. How much cabbage you cut is also up to you. Some people like to do 50 cabbage, 50 meat, but that's your choice. Then we're gonna work with our shiitake and we can just pop the middle bits out like this. Then slice it and the reason we add shiitake to our meat is that it sort of has a bit of a spongy texture and it really just sort of builds uh, into that flavor and the texture of it all. Now some spring onion. I like to peel the outside off and then chop it and we add the spring onion because that gives it a little bit of an oniony taste and it also just balances the flavors really well. Now for some garlic, I always pop the middle bit out because I think that that's a little bit bitter and what I like to do is just cut it really, really finely so that you don't end up biting into chunks of garlic uh, when you make your dumplings. When it comes to chili, you don't have to add any, but I find that I really like the spicy flavor to it, and so I cut it really, really small so that it blends really well and you don't end up with sort of one gyoza that's really spicy and then one that isn't. So just be really careful with this. Time for some ginger. Now you just wanna cut the outside off of it first. And what I like to do is slice it into little bits and then I stack them and slice it into strips and then I can sort of chop that. And I find that that's just a lot easier, especially if you don't have a lot of sharp knives. So now for our orange, I like to grate the outside a little bit and then add some juice. And I like to sort of contrast orange with duck, but you obviously don't have to do that. You can decide on whatever kind of seasoning you would like to add yourself. So now we're gonna prep our duck breast. And I just like to blot it dry before working with it because I find that it's easier that way. So first I'm gonna cut the skin off the breast and the reason I do this is because it is much easier to cut them individually and then mix it together instead of trying to cut through the whole thing all at once. So we have our duck skin and this is really nice because it's really fatty and I like to cut it into strips and then just break them apart and then just line them up and chop it into tiny little chunks. Now with the meat itself, I just slice this and, and then stack it and then cut it into more strips. Once I've got it into strips, I just pick it up and cut it into more chunks again. So it's a little bit uneven, but there's small little bits that end up tasting different than ground meat does. Now we've got all of our duck and we can just kind of mix that together to mix sort of the fatty bits with the meat bits. So we've got all our meat and we're just going to add some cabbage and some shiitake and you can decide how much of everything you want to put in there. I tend to put more veggies in this than in other ones, but then I add some garlic and I add some ginger so that I can just faintly smell it. If you're going to put chili in, do that separately from your orange if they're the same color because otherwise you will never be able to tell how much of what is in there. So now I'm going to add some of my orange zest and orange juice, which is going to make it quite wet, so pay attention. Bit of five spices bit of hoisin sauce, just enough to add a little bit of flavor to it. A tablespoon or so of soy sauce, a tablespoon of rice vinegar, some sesame oil, 
some minin for sweetness, and I'm just gonna mix all of that up together and smell it intermittently, and then we add the cornstarch. Now the cornstarch is important because it's gonna help bind the meat together and make sure that it doesn't end up very wet at the end. Now we wrap it up and put it away overnight. So if we're ready to fold our gyoza, we're gonna have to make sure that we thaw our gyoza leaves. And we're just going to check on our meat that we left overnight and we want to make sure it's not too wet otherwise we add a bit more cornstarch. So now for folding we're going to take a gyoza leaf and put it in our hand, get a little bit of meat and put it in the middle about like this. We're going to wet the edge that is farthest away from us and then we're going to pinch the top. You don't have to touch the meat at all, all you have to do is slowly fold the dumpling wrapper around one side. Then start on the other side and fold it back in the other way. So you don't have to shape the meat at all because you end up shaping the meat by folding the wrapper around it. Now you're probably going to have to do this for a while because you've got a lot of meat. So I'd say put on a movie, find a place that you're comfortable, and best of luck! So I just want to show you how I put these away. I put them in plastic containers with some baking paper in between. So I make flat bits, but I also make strips for in between each gyoza because when you put them in the freezer, they will freeze together unless you separate them and then they end up breaking when you try to take them out. So if we're ready to cook, we're going to put some peanut oil in our pan and turn the flame up to high heat. And once the oil's hot, we're just going to put our gyoza in the pan. And then we're going to cook it for three minutes. Once that's done, we're going to add about a cup of water to our pan, put the lid on, and cook it for 10 minutes. Then we take the lid off, add some sesame oil, and cook it for another three minutes. Now once that's done, our gyoza are ready, and we're ready to serve them. So here are our gyoza. They're soft in the center, but they've got a sort of crunchy bottom, and they're just my favorite things to eat when I'm feeling lazy. Thanks for joining me on Sister's Kitchen, and I hope to see you guys back soon.